because the Minifly controller is one of the most popular compact controllers you'll find from Skahoy, we have made a number of configurations so that you can enjoy different flexibility without having to be a wizard in configuring them. Anyway, I want to show you how you can change the Minifly from the default configuration we have looked at in some other videos, namely the one that is called Atom Pro Audio, to one that is more focused on uh, Kia action. So if you don't want to adjust audio too much, you can um, leave that out and get some other stuff done. And uh, now what you see right here is the configuration interface for the Minifly connected to my computer with this USB cable right here on the desk. And um, it is currently on the audio configuration. So I'm not now just going to change to Kia. And um, if you wanted, you could then look at the configuration. We are not going to do that here. We are going back to the firmware application. And the, the fact alone, the fact that we changed um, that configuration to the other one means that now for this controller, when I press the check for updates button, I will now request a updated software based on that configuration from the server online. Um, this is what we are waiting for right now, and I might uh, cut out some waiting time here. So it's basically generating the software on the server right now, taking into account all the device cores that you might have added, which are different from an Atom device core and so forth. And the software is ready. So it's basically um, rebooting the unit. It's uh, programming the firmware right now. Okay. Firmware successfully updated. You'll see the Minifly is now rebooting. You can see that here. Uh, so it's uh, going through some intro animation and colors and so forth. And now it's going to connect to the Atom switcher. There you go. It's connected. This is seen by that one. I can't pull this one out. Otherwise, the power is disappearing too. Uh, because I just wanted to show you that it will show if it's unconnected. Anyway, we are connected to the Atom switcher. And uh, as usual, we have a row here for, for selecting sources on the preview bus. This would be a shift key that will, uh, like you have seen in the other configuration, uh, show you the sources um, uh, 7, 8, 9, and so forth. And um, in this case, the uh, tally bars or LED bars here, the meters, will just reflect the tally from the um, select row. So it's just nice replication of that. So the interesting thing is the upper row. So we still have a shift key over here that will cycle through a number of things. What we see in this close up is that this would be DSK1, downstream key 1 and 2 on off. Now, if I press the lower edge on this key, I'm going to do it now. You see that it's changing to auto and then it's back to on off. Let's go to the ATEM software and see now downstream key 1 on off. Yes, it's toggling on off. If I go here, it's now auto on off. Thank you. Let's try DSK2. Same thing. On off, on off, or auto as I want. I have the same thing going for Kia 1 and 2. So if you see upstream Kia 1 and 2, I can turn them on and off. And I can also use an auto transition for each of them. Very nicely done. Here I have uh, my transition. You can see that I'm now going <coughs> to because this is the four-way button, it's set up to basically cycle through the different uh, transition styles that I can use for ME1. And uh, here we have um, the um, mix rate for um, transition rate for the mix transition uh, in this case. I think I would need to go to mix to see that happening in the interface. So now we can see it right here because we are on the mix transition. Yes, okay. So I can see, um, look at some other things we can do. We also ha have auxiliary one and two in this configuration. So uh, let's pull down auxiliary one. You can see as I press the edges, I am selecting forth and back auxiliary one. It's really easy. And you might think that it's a little bit clumsy to uh, not hit edges of the other buttons. I don't think so. It's actually in reality pretty easy to use this as an encoder, surprisingly, um, but really, really effective. That's so awesome. So that was auxiliary two. I was uh, working right there. If I press this one down, we have auxiliary three and four. So um, that's basically the shift key. You see auxiliary three right there used uh, on the same two buttons. That's really, really flexible. And here we have media player one and two. So uh, if I want to show you that, I can go to the media bank right here. And as I cycle this one, you see how media player one is changing its content by the press of the edges on this button. Very awesome. And um, 
then we have here uh, DSK1, 2, and uh, key as fill sources. And I have, if I press here, key sources. So that's a little bit complex, but let's go and check it out. So if I go to uh, upstream Kia 1, um, we can see that this is uh, Kia 1, and uh, this is the key source. It's currently black in this display. It's also black right here. So let's see what happens if I press this. You can see on the edges, I am now cycling this source up and down. Isn't that neat? I think it's so awesome. And then if I if I press the shift key, I'm back. It says fill source now, and that is color 2. It says color 2 in the display, and as I... Uh, tap this button, you see that I'm changing um, the, the fill source, no problem. Now, uh, it's totally the same with Kia 2. I'm not going to show you that. Downstream Kia, the same. It's the black source right now, but if I press here, I'm, I'm going to change uh, the key and fill source of downstream Kia 1 with a button press right here. Here we have macro playback. Let's just play a macro back. We can see that the software responds. It was playing back a macro, and that's it. I think that's all I need to show you right now. That was a different configuration. Um, when we made it, we wanted to make it really simple. And before we knew, we just had a powerful and deep configuration once again, because it's so much fun to do these things. It's so powerful and you so easily get lost in ideas about how you want to combine these buttons and this edge should do this and this should do that. And that's, that's a pretty good sign if the developers feel like that. Then uh, I think it's going to help a lot of users as well. And of course the challenge can be to um, kind of constrain yourself a little bit and not go nuts. But we love the fact that there will be depth way beyond your imagination when you get started with this. So have fun with your Minifly and all your new Skyway controllers with the four-way buttons because it's going to be such a ride for you.